welcome to the Daily Decrypt, where currency competition is hot, hot, hot. I am your host, Amanda B. Johnson, and today's episode is brought to you by Bank to the Future. Some cryptocurrencies use proof of work to generate their blockchain, their ledger, and others use proof of stake. The point of either proof of work or proof of stake is to incentivize actors to generate a record of the truth. The truth being which funds belong to which addresses, and then to allow everyone else on the network to agree with that version of truth. This is called reaching consensus, which is why proof of work and proof of stake are dubbed consensus algorithms. There exists a third kind of consensus algorithm, however, called delegated proof of stake, and it's currently being used in the BitShares network and is intended to be used in the Lisk network, which you may have heard raised a good chunk of change recently. To learn more about the delegated proof of stake consensus algorithm, I called up old Fabian Shu, a BitShares developer. Witnesses are the block producers. Um, they get paid for collecting all the transactions in the network and um, bundling them together in a block and signing them. There are currently 23 witnesses elected to produce blocks in BitShares. In fact, here's a recorded live feed of the witnesses doing just that about 20 minutes ago. Now, these 23 witnesses were voted upon by BitShares stakeholders, and the existence of more witnesses or fewer witnesses could be decided in any future vote. Now, this is where delegated proof of stake is hugely different than either proof of stake or proof of work. In the latter two networks, anybody can join. In proof of work, if you've got a mining machine, you can join. In proof of stake, if you've got some monetary capital, you can join. Not the case with delegated proof of stake, where, regardless of capital, one is only allowed to submit one's version of the truth, blocks, if one is elected to do so. If I wanted to destroy the BitShares network, if I wanted to defraud it and double spend, would I need to get a majority of witness positions voted to my possession, like basically what I need to trick the stakeholders that I was like a nice, trustworthy person and then get them to vote me to have a lot of witness nodes or how would that work? Actually, you could, you could do that. Um, you could either um, like uh, convince others to vote for you and obtain 51% of the um, yeah, voting power, for instance, a proxy could achieve 51% or more voting power, then uh, he decides essentially anything in the network. So he could, he could replace the whole committee, he could replace all the witnesses. Um, but then on the other hand, um, if he has that kind of power, then uh, it's okay because he owns the network. And why would anyone want to become a witness in the first place? A witness is basically just you create an account on the blockchain and then you install the, the witness, um, like the application is a little more for technics, technical savvy people. They, it's, a, it's a little more involved than just opening a browser. Uh, then you can just launch a simple um, call that states create witness. You state your name and then that's it. And then you have the witness account created uh, that you could use to deploy your service. Um, you could get paid or you get paid one and a half BTS per successfully signed and approved block. Mm -hmm. um, but you need to be approved by the shareholders as an active witness. So you mm -hmm. need to run a campaign and say, okay, this is, uh, maybe you stay anonymous, um, but you at least, at least show that you can manage the, the network, like mm -hmm. participate in the test network, um, show that your hardware is um, like uh, stable and reliable. Uh, and then you just need to tell people that they should give you a chance for voting. All right. So when when witnesses are elected in bid shares, mm -hmm. uh, there would you is it is it true to say there is a degree of trust involved? Yes. Okay. I would say so. Yeah. Um, the um, thing is also that witnesses are uh, constantly monitored. So um, if if they do something that's not okay. Um, shareholders can be alerted by that and then they lose their reputation mm -hmm. and um, when, when if you ever looked into your reputation it is very hard to gain reputation and very very easy to lose all of it instantly 
Right. So um, you probably don't want to mess it once you have been approved as a witness, as a trustworthy mm -hmm. person. And would you say, so that's in delegated proof of stake, would you say that in regular proof of stake or proof of work that there is any trust involved? Um, okay, in, in the original idea of proof of work, there is no trust involved mm -hmm. um, because, um, yeah, the consensus mechanism just involves work. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, uh, there is now pooled mining, so pooling of work, mm -hmm. which is like pretty much like delegating work. Like I, I, I'm heading my miners towards one pool, which is like I'm delegating my working power towards a pool. And then what I do is I trust the pool operators. And we all know that essentially it's like, it's less than five people that control it like 60 or 70 percent of the mining power in, in, in Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. And if they decided to do something weird, um, it will take some time uh, until miners will uh, redirect their um, mining power to something, some other pool. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it, in proof of work, intrinsically, there is no trust involved, but because of the technology, how, how the work is like bundled to get today to achieve a profit out of it. It becomes centralized. Um, mining, it becomes centralized and then it becomes also uh, a, there's a, a degree of trust involved. With the power to delegate, stakeholders have the power to keep mining or witnessing decentralized, but to do that they must um, perhaps place a higher degree of trust in the individual witnesses they elect. Um, yes, and also um, in Bitcoin, um, the power that the mining pool has is um, proportional to the percentage of the mining or hashing power yes so um, in bit shares if uh, let's say there are 30 witnesses once you are an active witness you get a, the exact same responsibility exact same power as all the other 29 witnesses there so are no there's, no, there's, there's there's at least no different weights in in, in them right mm -hmm. they all have the same power and so we see that delegated proof of stake is quite different from proof of work or proof of stake in that shareholders can decide exactly who is allowed to produce blocks and furthermore those block producers cannot ever pool their resources together to share in power. This gives stakeholders complete control over decentralization, so to speak. So how might these consensus algorithms play out against one another in this great and grand new thing we now have called currency competition? I have no idea. It's like watching the most entertaining movie ever, except it's real life. Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Today's episode is brought to you by banktothefuture.com, the online investment platform that invests in the future of finance. One of their investments was African payments company BitPesa, and below you can find a video link that explains the impact they have had with Bitcoin in Africa. More information can be found at banktothefuture.com. And oh, my AMA on March 26th draweth ever near. Not only will you find out what three things I traded for three bitcoins in December 2013, but in the spirit of threes, I'll also tell you which three cryptocurrency news outlets I wrote for before deciding to start the Daily Decrypt. That'll all be going down at reddit.com slash r slash the Daily Decrypt this Saturday, March 26th. Be there or be square. Bye. First of all, are you familiar with uh, Daniel Larimer's critique of proof of stake that is not delegated? Um, and what what would your response to his critique be? So I actually uh, think that the, the important thing when you're thinking about any of these markets uh, is basically the you have you have to look at the like the the, the dynamics of the market and ask whether um, you know people who are not in the majority will be represented. 